Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Josh and in today's video, I'm gonna be going over a quick stimulus update and some other news pieces. So I'll be discussing the possibility of a fourth stimulus check, updates on the child tax credit payments, unemployment, and then also some other updates on the bill based around infrastructure. But first, before I get into today's video, if you enjoy stimulus related content like this and wouldn't mind helping me out, I would greatly appreciate it if you could just real quickly hit the like button. That helps with the YouTube algorithm. Also, if you would like to receive a couple of free stocks from Weeble valued up to $2,300 in total, make sure to claim them by clicking my link in the description box below. Okay, so jumping right into the video for today, residents in Florida are the next ones in line to sue their governor over his decision to stop the $300 weekly enhanced benefits. In recent weeks, lawsuits were also filed in Indiana, Ohio, and Maryland, also based on stopping those benefits as well. In total, 26 of the 50 states decided to stop the $300 weekly plus up, reason being high unemployment numbers, despite the fact that employers are having troubles finding people to work. As of June, Florida had a 5% unemployment rate, which is a good bit higher than where they were at before the pandemic. Personally, being a resident of Florida, I can say I've seen numerous businesses looking to hire and apparently without much luck, given they've had signs looking for help for months now. Now, the main reasons residents are able to win lawsuits in these states and have the unemployment benefits reinstated which will also more than likely be the outcome in Florida as well, is because of a statute in the state's law books. According to a senior at the Century Foundation, Andrew Stetner, a statute in Florida's law books calls for the Department of Economic Opportunity, which is the agency in charge of administering jobless benefits, to cooperate with the United States Department of Labor to the fullest extent and shall take those actions necessary to secure for this state all advantages available under the provisions of federal law relating to reemployment assistance. So it's kind of hard for a state to say they're taking every action necessary to secure all advantages available relating to reemployment assistance when they're actually ending the $300 weekly plus up earlier than what they need to. So again, more than likely they will win this lawsuit in Florida and the $300 weekly benefits will continue. However, regardless, for all states, these benefits will be ending on September 6th. And at this point, there are still no real serious talks of having them extended. In some other stimulus news, the next batch of $250 or $300 child tax credit payments are set to go out in less than three weeks. Again, just like the first one, you should be receiving $250 for each child you have ages 6 to 17, and $300 for each child you have under the age of six. Instead of receiving your payments on the 15th of next month, instead you will be getting it just a little bit earlier on the 13th, just because the 15th falls on a Sunday. If you would like to opt out of receiving these payments for whatever reason, you'll need to do so by August 2nd. You can do so by going through the child tax credit portal and choosing to opt out of receiving the payments. As far as why you may want to opt out of receiving these payments, first off, if you normally owe the IRS money when you go to file your taxes, it may actually help having a larger credit when the time comes just to offset what you may owe. Secondly, if you come into an unexpected pay raise, it may also be a good idea to opt out of receiving these payments. This is because if you make too much money in order to be eligible for the credit, you will then have to pay all that money back that you received back on your taxes. And finally, you may just want a larger tax refund in one lump sum payment. If you don't need the extra $250 or $300 now, instead, if you hold off just a little bit, you could receive a larger tax refund. So no real right or wrong answer here, just personal preference. In some other stimulus related news, in what many people are calling a make or break week, the bill to be based around infrastructure is still moving at a snail's pace. With Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer already making things pretty clear that he wants to pass the $1 trillion bipartisan package in addition to the much larger $3.5 trillion budget plan before the Senate leaves for its recess in August, it definitely puts them in a bind. Former President Donald Trump released a statement on Monday warning Republicans about being played as 
losers by Democrats in regards to the bipartisan infrastructure negotiations. In a statement, Trump said, quote, Senate Republicans are being absolutely savaged by Democrats on the so-called bipartisan infrastructure bill. Mitch McConnell and his small group of rhinos want nothing more than to get a deal done at any cost to prove that he could work with the radical left Democrats. Trump continued, It is so important to him that he is agreeing to almost anything. Don't do the infrastructure deal. Wait until after we get the proper election results in 2022 or otherwise, and regain a strong negotiating stance. Republicans don't let the radical left play you for weak fools and losers. So it's apparent where the former president stands on that deal. Rob Portman, the lead Republican negotiator on the deal, said they were about 90% of the way there, with the main roadblock being how much to spend on public transit. Of course, there have been many other sticking points as well, such as how much to spend on highways, water projects, and whether or not to use unspent COVID relief funds to help pay for the package. It's also being noted that Democrats would agree to accept the Republicans' offer on highways as long as Republicans move towards their position on transit. So with the two sides still a good ways apart and former President Donald Trump pushing for Republicans to abandon the deal altogether, it should be real interesting to see how this week unfolds. If talks do break down completely, which really wouldn't be incredibly surprising, we may see the Democrats try to roll pieces of the infrastructure bill into their larger $3.5 trillion proposal they already plan on passing through reconciliation. Of course, this could make the plan even more costly and put pressure on these so-called modern Democrats, such as Joe Manchin, on accepting such a deal. If he was to accept a deal, the chances of getting reelected in a state like West Virginia would get less and less by the day. If he rejected the deal and Democrats failed to get it through, you would see the left be the ones to add pressure on Senator Manchin by hoping to get him booted in the next primary. Regardless, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says she has no plans of putting the bipartisan infrastructure bill on the floor for a vote in the House, even if it does pass in the Senate unless they also pass along the much larger $3.5 trillion budget reconciliation bill. So it definitely looks like we're in for a long year ahead. And in case you're wondering whether or not there were plans of a fourth stimulus check being included in the $3.5 trillion reconciliation bill, at this point, there are not. At the end of March, if you remember, 21 Democrats in the Senate sent a letter to President Biden supporting the idea of recurring payments. However, since then, we haven't seen a whole lot of support. And you would think with $3.5 trillion more in spending, they would be able to find the room for another round, even if they were more targeted. Instead, they're looking at funding free universal preschool for all three and four year olds. They also want to make community college free for all students, expand the total amount of Pell Grants, and increase the maximum individual award. They also want to create a national and comprehensive paid family and medical leave program, expand access to the summer EBT program, which helps some low income families with children buy food outside the school year. Additionally, they're also looking to extend the $1.9 trillion COVID stimulus plans provision, which is lowering health insurance premiums for those who buy coverage on their own. And then they're also looking to extend the child tax credit expansion that was included in the COVID relief bill. So as you can see, there are definitely a lot of freebies being offered, but not included is a fourth stimulus check. So on that note, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video. But before I go, again, if you would like to receive a couple of free socks from Webull, valued up to $2,300, Make sure to claim them by clicking my link in the description box below. Once you open an account with Webull, you will receive the first free stock valued up to $300. Then once you make a deposit of at least $5, yes, just $5, at that point, Webull will send you the second free stock, this one being valued up to $2,000. Once you receive the two free stocks, at that point, you can either use the $5 you deposited to invest in more stocks or you can simply transfer that money right back into your bank account. If you'd like, you can even sell the free stocks you received for whatever amount they're worth and transfer that money right back into your bank account as well. So free stocks or free money, however you would like to think of it. 
So again, thank you so much for watching, and if you did make it all the way to the end, I would greatly appreciate it if you could take just a few more seconds out of your day to like this video, share it, and also subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video.